Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. Recently, I've produced a couple of videos suggesting easier way to do model railway videos and I've suggested a couple of cameras. Sadly, um, a couple of those cameras have been rather expensive and people have implied that there might be something better around. And to that end, when I was at the photography show, which is a trade show in Birmingham, a few weeks ago, I went across to the Sony stand and asked them if I could borrow a camera. You never know. To my surprise, a charming chap called James said, yes, certainly, which one would you like to borrow? And I said, well, I'd like to borrow a reasonably priced Handycam, such as this little beast here, which they've obviously sent me. I said, would you, do you require a deposit or whatever? And they said, no, we do our, our loans for review and we take them on trust that you'll do the review and send them back. But it's noteworthy to say at this point that Sony have lent me this camera. There's nothing in it for me. It's not a free camera. It's going to go back in the post on Tuesday. Um, and I will give you my honest opinion of it. And if I think it's horrible, I'll say so. And if I recommend it, I'll say so. But rest assured, this is not a sponsored video. So let's kick off with a little bit of footage. These model railway videos were taken uh, at a friend's of mine house with its very large layout. And um, I shot it in 4K, so the camera is working the best it can. But what I didn't do was turn on extra lights to sort of give it a bit, a bit more depth. I thought, we'll let the camera struggle on its own and everything is set to auto. Of course, 4K did, does deliver exceptional image quality, but um, most people view YouTube videos at 1080, therefore uploading in 4K is really a waste of time. Recording in 4K isn't a waste of time because when you downsize it from 4K to 1080 you do get a better picture but you get terribly big file sizes, four times the size in fact of 1080. So for this first section here they're all in 4K downsized to 1080. Those model railway clips are all shot handheld i.e. not on a tripod and if I open this camera up and then zoom in a little bit and if you look straight into the centre of the lens, hopefully you can see that if I move the camera body around, the lens seems to stay still because it is on like a floating gimbal effect, which gives you much better stability if you're hand holding. To emphasise this stability, this shot's taken quite close to these trees. And as you can see, I can't hold the camera dead still, and you can see that effect, but in the distance, as you can see, um, the train coming round with the uh, Kartik 4 uh, racks of cars on board, you can see that that remains perfectly stable and it's a clear advantage of having this gimbal design built into this little camera. And here you can see um, his station he refers to as London, um, which is obviously quite an expanse, and as I walk back holding the camera it seems reasonably stable considering how much I'm, uh, I'm moving. So this gimbal effect is pretty good. So let's get into the camera proper. Well, there's two ways of uh, viewing your scene and that is you simply open this screen and the camera turns on and hopefully you can see my fingers in the viewfinder or if you didn't want to do that you can pull out this viewer and tip it up if I can get that right, yep, tip it up, and then you can simply um, uh, shoot your, your footage and then pe but people around you, let's say you were in a, a theatre or whatever, couldn't see your screen so it's a little bit more discreet. Or if it's exceptionally bright and you have trouble seeing the screen because the sun's on it, then using this little viewfinder is a good idea. And then also, if I zoom in a little tighter, there's a small wheel in here and it's not easy to, to, to use, which is ideal because that's a diopter. So you can poke your finger on that, turn the wheel and if you wear reading glasses, it shuffles the lens um, in or out so that the screen you view is then in, in uh, perfectly sharp focus. So as you've noticed, when you open up the screen, you obviously get a, um, a greetings noise and the shutter opens, which normally protects the lens. Now, if I leave it in this uh, condition, 
eventually it will just shut itself down again because um, the camera will believe as you're not using it that um, it wishes to protect the screen and conserve its battery power so it will just switch off and close uh, the front opening again which is quite a good idea. Whatever camera I'm using there are a couple of features that I, that I consider to be must-haves. The first one is that it's got to be able to shoot in 1080p um, any, anything less than that is far from ideal and certainly for YouTube you're going to produce a poorer quality video. Like I said before, 4K isn't essential but it's certainly wise to buy something that's sort of future proofing. So that makes perfect sense. The next thing you must have, well sorry, I consider that you must have is an articulated screen and that means that when I pull the screen out I can turn it right around so I can actually view myself if I choose to do a vlog type video. The next must have is an external microphone input so that I'm not relying on the built-in microphone. I can actually fit one of my own mics on top, um, something called a shotgun mic, which tends to record sound that's based in front of the camera. So you don't get the surround sound as it were, I get what's in front of me. And the last two things it needs to have is a good uh, standard of autofocus and a way of monitoring the microphone level so you know the sound is good. Fortunately, this little beast has all of those features. Though it's built in microphone, um, I'm not a lover of. So what I shall do now is I'll record the next uh, uh, piece of footage on this camera and then using the internal mic and my external mic so you can see the difference. Okay, it's a little later in the day now, as you can see, the sun is streaming through this window. But we're good for a microphone test and this is the internal microphone on the camcorder. So, testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, la di da di da. Now we'll change to the small external shotgun mic. Okay, so here's the small shotgun mic, testing, testing, one, two, three. A friend of mine bought some cheap dynamite, turned out it cost him an arm and a leg. Testing, testing, one, two, three, there we are. One thing I did notice, when I initially plugged in the external mic, it didn't work. You have to turn the camera off, then plug in the external mic, and then turn it back on again. Um, obviously this is for to enable the camera to recognise the external mic. There we are. Okay, we're back on the uh, my big Sony camera now, and here we are on the with the little um, AX33. And there's the um, little shotgun mic that I had fitted. Um, and now we'll run through a close-up of all the little features and then I'll finish on some other footage I shot um, of a military parade the other day so you can get a feel for it at the outside, uh, working outside with this camera. Okay, running down uh, this side here. Um, this is where I plug the external microphone in and there's a hot shoe there should you purchase Sony's own uh, microphone. Um, there you can see the hot shoe, but obviously with just a plastic surround it works as a cold shoe and it's hidden quite comfortably under this little cover. There's a handy um, shooting strap um, on this side and there's a little slidey door um, which hides the um, microphone input, the earphones uh, output and also a, a, um, a, what do you call it, a micro HDMI out. It's always useful to have that microphone, uh, sorry, the um, headphones out jack because that way with an ordinary set of um, mobile phone earpieces you can hear the audio you're getting, um, you know, should you be shooting outside. Okay, there's a little um, USB cable here tucked in this strap um, and you can either download using that strap or you can use it as a charging point with the phone. On the back you have a power uh, on and off and also at the bottom there there's a DC power in. The battery is located at the back and it's a standard um, Sony battery and you can get much bigger ones than these, those Sony aren't going to thank me for this, um, much bigger and much cheaper on eBay. Um, you know they, these are a common kind of a fit really. On the bottom as you can see there's a tripod mount and if I just remove my 
tripod plate which I was using earlier and there you can see a standard tripod mount. Um, I've explained the um, the other the optical uh, viewfinder there and the diopter and then moving around to this side then we've got the articulated screen and I think you've probably got the hang of it now that I find this is a must. If however you're deciding to shoot it on a tripod and you want to stand to one side you can actually mount it so that the screen is at the side so you can have it forward facing, back facing or actually on the side. Obviously when you're not using it it folds away and then the screen doesn't get scratched. So behind the screen what's in here? Well you've got a main cover here in which you put your, um, your SD card and to get the best out of this camera you need to use I think it's called class 10 SD cards um, because they get extremely fast write speed to cope with the 4k data that this thing will push out. On and off switches, play, uh, there's a night mode to it um, and this sort of thing. Another HDMI out there, all kind of straightforward. When you come around the front there's a manual button and then through the manual button you can select various modes for this twist ring on the front. You might think that's a focusing ring, but it is when it's set to focus, but it can also be set to, um, to adjust numerous other functions such as the aperture and that kind of stuff. On the top of it is the microphone and the zoom, and I'm sure you've seen the zoom going in and out, and it's a times 10 zoom, but Little cheats have called it a time for times 15 clear magic zip. Sorry, bear with me. Clear image zoom. I don't have GCSE read upside down, so it's a times 10 zoom, but they've got a times five optical uh, digital zoom on the top of that. And if you know anything about me, then you'll know you I have a loathing of optical, uh, you have digital zooms. Behind the zoom button there's the photo button so when you press it you take a photo and also in here you change modes between photo and video but if you're in video mode and you want to photograph you just hit the photo mode. I think it's all, quite, all kind of straightforward. Um, the lens is made by Zeiss. Um, the thing that's been on the market, um, I better elaborate on that, it's now April 2019 and this has been on the market a few years. Um, it's still one, uh, part of Sony's current range so you can still uh, still buy it and in the uh, see more tab below you'll find a link to um, sort of current prices. But it, even though it's a couple of years old it's dropped its value um, you know the, the new retail value from £900 I think, which I think this thing first came on the market and since then it's dropped substantially only because technology is moving on and you know other companies such as Panasonic and all the rest of them have new cameras out but this is still the, in the, uh, the current Sony range and for value for money I would consider buying one of these if I hadn't just coughed out for a different camera which kind of serves me right doesn't it. I like this. Going into the, the touch screen Hopefully I can zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Um, and it's a simple touch screen. You can, there's obviously to record, you can see the microphone level there of my voice coming through this, um, uh, this, this internal mic. If I hit the menu button and up comes all the basic stuff such as setup, um, erase, copy, uh, the microphone settings, shooting mode, camera, mic and wireless. It's worth mentioning about the wireless side because you can actually operate it with a smartphone, kind of all good stuff. I've been through all these options and um, the, the thing to do is I've, I've left everything on auto because I thought that would be the only way, fair way of showing you a true, true representation of what you get out of the box if you're not a camera video kind of whiz. So I'll now show you some footage which I shot at a place called Shillingston down in Dorset. Um, it's a very new preserved railway if that makes any sense there. It's quite embryonic, they're just getting their kind of life together, they're short of money as all these little places are, but they've got a couple of engines down there. It was an exceptionally windy day and I had this Rode microphone with something called a dead cat, I'm sure you're aware of that, the great big furry thing, um, which did next to no use at all. But from the video you can see um, 
uh, the, the sort of quality of the of the 1080p. And then furthermore, tonight, the day after, I went to um, the Britannia Royal Naval College, a passing out parade down in Dartmouth, and there's some pictures of the Royal Marine Band and some sailors marching around. Um, but you will notice this, this buzz noise that came in on this external microphone um, because of all the electrical stuff and the loud speakers that were around me. Um, and again, there's a lesson for me there, is not to go out and use this externally um, without um, a set of headphones so you can see, you can hear exactly what you're getting from your external mic. Okay, so I'll be back after the, this next bit of footage. So here we are at Shillingston Station, which is a, a little preserved railway down in Somerset. The wind is blowing a hooli here, so it'll be a good test for this microphone. It's early days at this place for their renovation, um, but it's quite a nice interesting little project from a model railway point of view. And if you see here, this track has yet to be ballasted. I don't think I've ever seen a track quite like that. As you can hear, the crows are in good voice. They've obviously preserved a nice little line side hut. They have a little Rushton preserve shunter and a tanker, and it looks like a, a Mark 1 coach. Let's try the zoom out here. See what the focus is like. That's pretty good. I've always found that going from bright to shade has always been a problem with cameras. So if we zoom in here, let's see how it copes. Don't we see much detail in there? Then you can see the way the aperture inside the camera closes down as soon as we hit the the highlights. Back into the shade. Beautiful. Lovely little lovely local southern region lineside hut there. Masking off this loco and it looks like uh, an O an O six O. Let's try and see if we can zoom into the number. And there we go, 30076. I can't deny it, I'm not a steam expert, so I can't really tell you exactly what this loco is. Of course, if I looked at the front, I would have found the number there. Camera copes well, going from shadows to highlights. I quite like that. It's looking good. I think this railway certainly has its work cut out. There's a guards van if you can make that out, and obviously just the cab from 30075. Ah, so there's the rest of it. Try this zoom again, there we go. And another few line side huts.
was stirring stuff, wasn't it? So we just needed to a little mention about the specs. Um, it's 25 frames per second at 4K and at 1080p it's either 25 or 50. So if it was to be your only camera then you might choose to shoot at 50 frames per second because then all your panning and movement shots there'll be twice as many frames so it will give her a much more sort of smoother cinematic look to it. So there we go. Um, what do I think of it? I do like it. A couple of things I don't like um, and that is there is no shade to it. We, you know, there's no sun, there's no sort of lens shade or anything. Um, and uh, I did find that when I did that uh, shoot at Dartmouth, when the troops, when the young sailors were marching towards the, the lens, obviously I was just getting a little bit of flare. And, and also um, back in the, the early shots at McKinley Railway, um, there was some flare coming off the lights in that room. Um, as, as far as holding it's concerned, that's no, no problem. But if you've got the microphone here, your fingers are in the way. Yeah, sorry, the microphone is in the way of your fingers, so that's kind of a bit odd because you have to pull your fingers back there, which seems strange. Um, everything else is good to go. You can find the photo switch just, just there and the zoom in and out is a piece of cake as well. You just need to remember that telephoto is that way and wide is that way. Um, so there we go. Um, I like it. It's a good little camera. Sadly, I'm going to have to post it back to Sony on Tuesday um, and uh, I'll see if uh, I don't know whether I get one or not really. Um, the trouble is I've got so many cameras and you just can't keep buying them just because you can try and stick them on the business. If you don't own a camera and you want to do your own video work, it's certainly worth checking this one out and I will leave a link, leave a link in the description below. So there we go. Until next time, that's about it really. There should be a subscribe button there and for my patrons, or to become a patron I should say, there should be a link there and a video here and a video here. And you know you've got time, take care, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.